Sandra, I want to talk to you about Sandra Bullock because no, I um, feel badly for her. You were bad. Why do you? you don't I don't feel, know her, but I just. You feel bad, not badly. No, no, um, that's an adverb. You can no, no, no. You don't feel sadly, do you? You feel bad. You feel sad. <laughs> it's Sunday morning on CBS, okay, and here you're again you're is Charles Osgood. Osgood. What a joy it is to listen to the opinions of TV talker Joy Behar. It is if you agree with what she's saying, anyway. And even those who disagree can't deny that she has succeeded in finding an audience. Russ Mitchell has prepared this Sunday profile. That's what, what I this? like. From her perch on The View... This affair stopped him from doing that. He would have been a very bad president. ...where she voices her opinions about everything. Hasn't it been the year of the idiot men? I mean... Politics. All the lies that they've been putting out from Sarah Palin on they're not, they're, up. They're, Fashion. All I can say about this is Charlene got tired of people looking at her beautiful face, and she said, start looking at my... And yes, infidelity. That's not your business no, or my I, business. And she was not married to him. Uh, 99 out of 100 things I talk about on this show are none of my business. <laughs> One thing is clear. I, I A lot of people I think actually, we imposed our will on Iraq. Yeah, I, I Joy Behar likes to talk. You see, there are ways to deal with yeah. prejudice and racial issues well, in people, different ways. People, I love a conversation. I don't think there's anything more great, more fabulous than a conversation. So if I can just keep having conversations and getting paid to do them, I'm a happy woman. And at age 67, Behar is really happy. She's added an evening roost, a talk show all her own, on the cable news channel HLN. In the old days, reporters had to turn over a rock to find someone's mistress. Now they simply crawl out on their own. So Monday through Friday, from late morning to prime time, Behar is talking and talking. You're a busy woman these I days. I am busy. I'm busy. I like to be busy. What else is there to do in life but be busy? She's even come up with a new term for herself. I'm a fundit. Okay. Um, Bill Maher is a fundit. Um, um, Louis Black is a fundit. Uh, people who have a tremendous interest in politics and social issues and use it in the, in the stand-up also. But being a fundit doesn't mean it's all fun and games. The difference between free speech and hate speech, and we've been listening to it from Beck and Limbaugh now, freedom. and these people are all juiced up by these two. Her unabashed liberal opinions often lead to some heated debates with her view co-hosts. They took out uh, any kind of funding for abortion. Not where enough. is this a radical... No. I'll tell you. Where is this a radical program? CNN, see, it's radical because... In the Especially way, maybe with the politically conservative Elizabeth Hasselbeck. What is it that you don't like in the bill? Yeah. Anything that is a mandate is like a problem. So, where did this liberal streak come from? It comes from um, being smart. <laughs> <laughs> what would Elizabeth say to that? Uh, listen, I have my prejudices, you know, too. I think that people who are liberal are more open-minded. That's all. I just believe that. You know, you can argue with that all you want. You can say, oh, conservative people are open-minded. And I don't agree with that. I don't. While Behar is the first to admit she's a comic and not a legitimate journalist. And have you seen some of the ads that are running? In 2008, when presidential candidate John McCain joined the co-hosts of The View, Behar wasn't shy about asking him some tough questions. There's, there are ads running from your campaign. One of them is saying that Obama, when he said you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig, mm -hmm. was talking about Sarah. There's another ad that says that Obama was interested in teaching sex education to kindergartners. Now, we, we know that those two ads are untrue. They're lies. And yet you, at the end of it, say, I approve these messages. Actually, Do you really approve them? Actually, they're not lies. In well, apparently, the yeah. L word had not been used before and you know if I wasn't uh, you know um, uh, on Medicare I would say it was out of the mouths of babes <laughs> <laughs> the McCain versus Behar exchange made news catching the attention of New York Times columnist Frank Rich someone once called you the Edward R Murrow oh, well, for our times is that a compliment what do you think about that well the Edward R Murrow is a bit much but I have it framed you have it framed oh yeah ah, well okay. listen you don't get called Edward R Murrow every day <laughs> I like Jewish guys. Italian guys are very cute, but their attitude is, yo, go get the ravioli. Get your own ravioli, all right? And Behar believes her political perspective comes from her Italian-American family. There was one in-law who loved Mussolini, <laughs> but, you know, we thought he was an idiot. <laughs> I make fun of him in my act, in my show. But, no, they, um, they were very open-minded. I never heard racist talk, homophobic talk, nothing like that. It was a very unusual family, I guess.
The only child of Rose, a sewing machine operator, and Lewis, a truck driver, Josephine Victoria Okudo was raised in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. Memories, things coming back to you from, Memories. from, from back in the day? Like the mozzarella of my <laughs> mind. <laughs> what about this neighborhood made you who you are? What's the one thing you took out of this neighborhood? Well, you can feel the grit, can't you? Mm. You feel the grit of it. It's like a real New York experience, you know? And those gritty New York experiences laid the groundwork for Behar's comic sensibility with some encouragement from her relatives. I'd be at a wake as a kid, like a little five-year-old kid, and I would s just sit there and listen to the conversations, and, and they sounded absurd to me as a little kid. They'd be like, um, he looks good. No, he doesn't look good. I'd think to myself, what are they saying? Or one time somebody said, um, he looks just like himself. And I thought, well, who should he look like? And I'd start making fun of everybody at the wake and what they were saying and the way so-and-so acted with, at the casket, and I'd have them all laughing. They were okay with that. Yeah. Now, some families might not have been okay with that. They might have said, that's so disrespectful, you shouldn't do that, but not mine. <laughs> <laughs> they were perfectly happy to go along with the gallows humor of it. Behar flirted with the idea of becoming an actress, but after college graduation, she got married, became a mother, and tried her hand at many different jobs. I used to teach English to high school dropouts in a tough, tough neighborhood. The kind of kids who go to jail because they set fire to their parents. <laughs> then they would send them to me to teach them the difference between who and whom. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the jobs I had. Did you like it? Sometimes yeah. I did. Sometimes. I like teaching the dropouts. The ones I just made fun of, they were my best <laughs> students. I loved them. But at age 40, after divorcing her husband of 16 years, Behar came to a realization. I thought, uh-oh, now you've tried everything and nothing is working for you, you know. And so I, I tried to do stand-up at that point because I knew I was meant to do it. Uh -huh. I just didn't have the guts to do it before that. I'm divorced. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. You know, she did pretty well pretty fast. A few months ago, I get a call, Happy Hanukkah. I said, Ma, I'm not Jewish. Daughter Eve was 11 when her mother went from school teacher to stand up. I think once she made the decision, she said, this is it, I'm going for it. And in 1997, when Barbara Walters was looking for co-hosts for a new show called The View, it was Behar's sense of humor that caught her eye. It's very difficult, especially for female comedians. It's very hard to, to make a place for yourself, and Joy was relatively late in doing that. Um, I think the talent was there, and I think the opportunity to do a program like The View changed her life. She never said she didn't know the difference between North Korea and South Korea. Did you have any idea that it would be on this long? No. Or have this type of longevity? No. Who, you know what they say, the show must go off. <laughs> <laughs> and the view stayed on. I saw another picture. Tiger. They were both wearing Nike. That is so romantic. <laughs> and one of the ongoing topics on The View is whether marriage is on the horizon for Behar and Steve Janowitz, a retired teacher, whom she refers to as... Well, the, my spousal equivalent and I have been together for 27 years now. I love that phrase, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I, he's a little younger than me. I, I, I got him just when he was, like, young enough to enjoy an older woman, a cougar. <laughs> and now we're just going into our dotage together, I guess. But <laughs> but he, um, he and I, we might, we might. I, I can't say for sure. What Joy Behar can say for sure is that on her journey from Brooklyn to stand-up. Well, you have to act like a man that think you're stupid. To television host. Why do you say you're a loveaholic? She's saved the best for last. Life begins at 60. It really it? began at 40 for me in many ways. It was like everything opened up to me. I completed my analysis, and I started to, uh, to blossom in a certain way, and it's been, it's been fun ever since.